Black Power. Funeral services for Queen Mother Lee Doris Higgins will be next Saturday at True Way Baptist Church. All who can go support our brother Comrade Macapone and his family. They are also still in need of financial support to deal with um, funeral expenses and other costs that come along when loved ones make transitions. So I'm including the GoFundMe. For all who can, please reach out to our great brother in person and do what you can. The other day I noticed, once again, I had a bunch of Facebook messages that I hadn't um, been notified about, some from several months ago. So it's not that I'm ignoring your messages. I just haven't been getting notified about them. And again, if you have my email or you could text me, that will most definitely be better because for whatever reason, um, I'm just not getting those messages. We've been going out to the community more these past few weeks to really try to um, get people to wake up and get them involved with these um, intensified attacks against us and some of the feedback we've been getting. You know, some people just didn't know. Some people are um, discouraged in the amount of people that are, are you know, rallying behind um, uh, movements to deal with this. And it doesn't matter how much information we put out. Um, the one thing we cannot do is give people heart, whether it's the heart to, um, you know, have compassion, consideration, concern for others, or whether it's the heart and courage to overcome the fear of um, dealing with this beast we are dealing with. But most definitely all who are um, in motion keep pushing forward. And, um, you know, history shows quite often it just takes small groups to um, make the changes that are necessary. So far this year, there have been, um, as of this morning, there have been 179 people killed by police. So that situation is most definitely continuing. It was intensified in 2012 while Obama was still in office and it's showing no signs of slowing down under this maniac who is now um, heading this state. But um, again, you know, we've been emphasizing getting your response team together, get your training, get your weapons, because, again, it's a minority who is doing this to the masses. A few nights ago, um, another brother, Jimmy Briggs, was killed by the Gardena police. So we are still looking into that. Um, just so happens one of the younger brothers who recently joined with us, Tony Briggs, DJ Novocaine, um, that was his cousin. So we're most definitely going to support this brother and do all we can to further look into that and, and support the family. Um, uh, last night, I was listening to another interview by the brother Jason Black. He produced the movie Gentrified. He was doing an interview um, with a radio station in Houston, and he was making a lot of great points as to what's happening with the gentrification across the nation. He was also putting out suggestions as far as what people need to do. One area where I disagree, he stated that ownership um, prevents people from hurting you. And history shows us that that's not necessarily the case. Again, uh, our ancestors were in a position of ownership in Africa when it began the first time. Many times throughout um, um, this journey in America, our ancestors um, attained a position of ownership, whether it was Black Wall Street or other communities. And again, the savagery of white nationalism didn't care about ownership. It just went in, killed, destroyed. So, again, that is why we emphasize that it is about military first. That is the first position. That is why white national nationalism is in the position it's in, because of the um, death and destruction it will inflict on its targets. So it's um, not economics first. It's not politics first. It's military first, politics, then economics, and then everything else falls in place. Also this past week, the um, situation with Kiari Harris and her children being kidnapped by the state um, further um, got exposed. Um, a sister in Buffalo, New York, felt the schools, the public schools were failing her children, her 11 and 8 year olds, so she pulled them out of the school. And for whatever reason, the, the school itself, the school district, um, did not fulfill their parts of, of whatever paperwork needed to be processed. And um, Children Protective Services got involved and kidnapped um, Kiari's children. 
And even after they went to court and proved to the judge it was of no fault of her own, the judge refused to release her children. He refused to give her unsupervised visitation. He refused to give her um, visitation supervised by her mom. And the first visit she was granted after a month was terminated after two minutes because she read a newspaper article that um, covered their story. So this is all out terrorism. This is straight out kidnapping. And it has to be pressed that the individuals doing this are criminal. They're psychopaths. Um, they're the savages. So one woman, woman was suggesting that it's about knowing your rights. But again, this shows it's not about rights. It's not about legality. They are straight out violating the sister's rights. As in most of the cases that we've been seeing, um, all this madness that is happening, um, first and foremost, it's a violation of human rights and, and inalienable rights. So um, we got to stop thinking it's about mastering the, the rules and games they told us to play by because they're not playing by any rules or anything of that sort. Also, this past week, more information came out about what took place at the um, um, uh, James T. Vaughn Correctional Facility in Delaware. So I'm including that. Uh, we will continue to monitor that situation because now we're in the 23rd week of the prison strike. And, you know, it's, it's, it's um, spreading. More and more and more people are starting to see um, they have to stand up to get up out of these modern day plantations. They have been forced on um, for nothing more than corporate America to capitalize off of. Also on Friday was the um, second general strike of this year um, to, to oppose what a lot of people are considering the um, Trump administration. But as we've been pointing out, it's bigger than Trump. Because even before him, even after him, if we don't get organized on the level we need to be, you know, it, it continues. So I most definitely encourage um, more brothers and sisters who are, are working on those plantations to really start considering these actions. The next um, main strike that, that people are now pushing is what's called May Day. But we need um, long term and even permanent strikes transitions from their plantations into building our own um industries institutions and um making that exodus because again one day you know it makes a, a great statement but it doesn't really um have the effect that we need that a, a longer term um protracted strike will have also this past week um satan announced that he wants to reach out to the congressional black caucus to have a, a discussion with them. But again, if you have been monitoring what they have been doing for many years now, um, they've been some of the main ones selling us out from these prison plantations to these um, wars of imperialism to um, um, building up these um, murderous um, police organizations in our communities to the gentrification that's happening. So the Congressional Black Hawk is, um, is an enemy class against the masses of our people. Um, Satan also announced he was um, going to start looking out for the historical black colleges and universities. And again, that's just a move to create a, another, um, create a new class of, of black elitists as they see this. The, the previous class is no longer um, having the effect that they need over the masses of black people. They are now looking to recruit from these um, HBCUs to replace them because the um, current body of, of so-called um, political leaders and, and church leaders no longer um, have the hold over the black community that they used to have. So that's why he's now um, supposedly in favor of the historical black colleges and universities trying to now um, groom the next 10 percent of sellouts. And just lastly, I want to. Um, I'm kind of excited because our sisters have now stepped up and taken over organizing the Break Bread program we have in Lamert Park. So today, um, all who can come out and, and join us, which you'll see today was organized by our sisters, my wife, um, our set, um, my sister Chastity, our sister Osana, um, our sister Afia, um, our sister Kamani, our sister... Um, um, uh, Tiffany and Julia, um, also shouting out our, our brother Dave, who also contributed. But um, 
they are putting this together, which is now freeing us up, the brothers, to look at other things and, and possibly start other programs that we've been wanting to start. Um, you know, because as, as people, I was reading a lot of posts the other day when, when the rain was just crazy. But again, um, you know, you got a home to go to where you can shower and get warm and drink some hot tea, coffee, and, and get under some blankets. But people are out here living in this. And you consider across the country where weather is more severe right now, you know, snow, whatever. But um, even out here in L.A., it was pointed out a few years ago, a sister uh, was given a blanket while it was raining, but she actually drowned in that blanket. So, um, you know, all who hear this, all who take this to heart, you know, whatever you can do to help other folks right now is most definitely needed. So we appreciate all who have been doing what they can to support our efforts and all who have been um, taking the initiative to get out there and do their own thing. Because right now is the time when we got to be about our own. All power to the people.